People are rushing here and there, down, staff, doctors, nurses, patients, patients, relatives, children, everyone. And there's a huge lot of commotion in these corridors and the, 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 the alleys. This robot is capable of transmitting or transferring these specimens, samples, food, laundry items, linen, everywhere to different rooms so that the doctors and the nurses can be used for patient-centric care. And they are not wasted in transporting or doing these menial odd jobs. So improved efficiency, right man for the right work, and refocus the existing staff on patient care. Now, just focus for a time being on the left side of the slide. Imagining lifting up this lady for a hysterectomy. Yeah, I already can see some people holding the back. Exactly. Now, if I as a gynecologist was to lift up this lady along with my hospital support staff to put her on the stretcher from the bed, I can't imagine it. Because not only would it have been unsafe for the lady, it would have resulted in some problems for me which would have led me possibly to charge my employer for workplace related injuries. But most importantly, if I have a robot who can lift up the lady gracefully and put her on the stretcher and then subsequently on the operating table and then get her down thereafter, life would be so comfortable and so easy for all of us. This is exactly what the RONA or the robotic nursing assistance system does. Then there is something into cosmetology also. This robot is capable of doing an excellent job for hair transplantation. So the guys who are sitting here, who are less fortunate or less are underprivileged as regards hair distribution, can think about this for a hair transplantation. This does it with precise accuracy and at half the cost at what the commercial batras and the others do. So this is where technology has been revolutionized. These have been the game changers. Comes another beautiful portion of marveling of injury, the sensium vitals patch. Typically what happens, in the hospitals, we doctors write TPR monitoring every two hours, four hours, eight hours. What happens in between? The sensium vitals patch monitor pasted on the patient's body gives you a record of all the vitals, temperature, pulse, respiration, BP, blood sugar, ventilation, you name it and what you have, you got it computerized every two minutes. So in the night when your nurse is sleeping and unfortunately cannot monitor you, this will send up a beep. So large number of patients are saved. Avoidable deaths are avoided and most importantly, hospital stay is curtailed. Then comes a full or a game changer strategy which we see, which we have seen. One is, as a gynecologist, I know that in India, in India, every five minutes a lady is dying because of maternal mortality. And I have here in the audience Dr. Aunkar, who is a public health, who is, who is a doctor with a public health system in Maharashtra, Pune, and he would vouch and bail me out how many ladies come for a simple hemoglobin estimation as a part of their antenatal checkup. And during this antenatal checkup, one of the important things is we do hemoglobin estimation. Unfortunately, these ladies don't come up, they end up with anemia, and anemia, my friends, is one of the major leading causes of bottom line of all the predecessing causes for maternal mortality. So this comes this gentleman called Miskin Ingawale in the center portion, the white, who's invented this biosense uh, by which a lady can undergo a hemoglobin estimation without undergoing the prick with which the ladies are afraid of. Again, a breakthrough revolutionary technology. Coming home, the Symbiasis Student Health Insurance Program launched by Dr. Alka and the entire team of the Symbiasis Center of Healthcare is another path-breaking revolutionary impact-making initiative or endeavor. I shall refer to this later when we say why this SSHIP launched by the Symbiosis Center of Healthcare becomes a game changer. And then you have got this GE's handheld electrocardiogram invented. What initially used to cost 1200 rupees, 1200 dollars now comes at 800 dollars and an ECG strip comes at less than one dollar a price for the uh, ECG. But amongst all these, all these guys who have impacted or all these systems which have impacted the healthcare delivery, my favorite for personal reasons and possibly as a gynecologist is this sanitary pad man or revolutionary or also known as the menstrual man of India, Arunachalam Muruguntanam from down south. See the scenario. BBC carries out a study. It says that less than 12% of the Indian women have any sort of sanitary protection. 
reasons, custom, tradition, and most importantly, cost. As a result of which, women, especially in the rural folks, do not use pads or use pads which they are afraid to dry, clean, and put out in the sunshine to get cleansed. As a result of which, they harbor infection, and as a gynecologist, again, I can tell you 70% of the RTIs, reproductive tract infections, are because of lack or absence of poor menstrual hygiene. Comes 1998, Arunachalam sees his wife putting rags in one corner of their dingy bedroom. He asks her, what are you doing? I can't process lingo in which he spoke. And then she said, I'm keeping these rags because I'll be using them in those four or five days. I cannot afford to use home outside commercially available pants, pads, stay free or whatever they are. They cost too much. Nor can I use them out in the open because our community does not look at it well. And then comes the change ecosystem in this man called Arunachala Muruguntanam, who starts thinking that can I produce some homemade pads which will be as efficient but will not cost so much and be accessible to the rural women folk. He goes from pillar to post, tries to see, analyze the products of commercially available sanitary pads, is not able to do so. To understand what are the travails of women, he makes an a, a inflatable football bladder, puts it under his vest and underclothes, and starts moving around to just to understand and empathize with the women how it feels when a fluid is flowing outside your underpants. People in his community say he is mad, he is possessed by spirits, he is a transgender who is afraid of washing his parts in public and therefore goes every two hours to change that bladder, artificial bladder. And most importantly, his wife deserted him. His wife deserted him because he was ostracized by society. Murugantanam did not give up. He approached organization companies from pillar to post, went to a professor to ask him what the problem is, who in turn directed him to one of the companies which produces these sanitary pads. Got the sanitary pads, analyzed the content, found out that the major ingredient was cellulose, which had this absorbency capacity, which prevented leakage and seepage, etc. Set up, studied the entire process. Scenario today, he set up his own small scale industry, 1300 units, producing few thousand pads every day in the most sanitary way at half or one fourth the cost of commercially available sanitary pads. Has got orders now from Philippines, Nepal, Bangladesh, Kenya. Most importantly, his wife has come back to him. So that is the story of this Arunachalam Muruguntanam, friends, who did not give up in spite of adversity. Obsessed by the idea, continued to pursue what he wanted to do and has become a success story. And therefore today is labeled as the menstrual man or man who made the period safe for women in India. Clap it for the ladies who today are suffering at this hand. Back home into this auditorium as to why and is how symbiosis classifies under this category of being a game changer. You've all seen the film on symbiosis. There was this Mauritian boy who suffered from jaundice, and then Dr. Muzumdar saw him and then initiated this concept of symbiosis, of getting together people and you know, sharing their culture. How many of us would have had the sensitivity to think differently? What we would have probably done is got this guy to a medical facility, treated him for a jaundice, and gone home and finished off the story. But here's a man who dared to dream Dream, dream differently and impact which led to the establishment of Symbiasis initially as a Symbiasis International Cultural Center. From Symbiasis International Educational Culture Center, it became a Symbiasis Society as an educational institute. From an educational institute, it became a university. And today this university, as Dr. Gupte Madam rightly said, promotes both entrepreneurship as well as intrapreneurship. Entrepreneurship by way of having incubation centers for the students, to carry out research projects, live industry projects, and entrepreneurship where every director, every head is given the autonomy to think differently, to come up with projects within the confines of symbiosis and contribute to an impact for the society at large. And this combination of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship leads to what we call as game changer story. But 
Is the story of symbiosis as a game changer restricted to symbiosis alone? No. The major impact or the game changing strategy which probably symbiosis adopted was the symbiosis center of healthcare. At the risk of repetition, Dr. Vidya shared with you, where we were in Oman, we saw the importance, the importance given to school health. We came back to India and as qualified Gynax, we thought one option was to set up a run-of-the-mill maternity hospital. No harm done. We would have won lots of money. Probably we had two, three hospitals by now, a few cars, and probably uh, many surplus, sell, uh, sleepless nights. But we chose to think differently as to how can we replicate this Omani model of preventive healthcare and student healthcare centric services in a close community like symbiosis. And then guys like Dr. Abhay Mani sitting in this audience and others, many others, got together, we infected them with this idea and set up the Symbiosis Center of Healthcare. Once established in 1997 from a small, humble beginning of 200 square feet where I think so Alka was there right from day one. We got together a team, gradually built up the team. Today we are occupying a few thousand square feet. It's not the material question of how many feet we are, square feet of area we are organizing, how much we contribute to the symbiosis revenue model. The important thing is the impact points. A, we introduced this concept of having a healthcare campus a healthcare facility or center on campus of an educational institute. When we set it up in 1997, and as is today also, the prospect of having a healthcare center on campus of an educational institute is probably alien. We had to convince the management that we need to set it up and how we are going to set it up. B, the impact points, the importance of preventive health. Today we realize that young students in the early 20s, 25s are subject to lifestyle related disorders, be it diabetes, type two, be it hypertension, be it obesity, be it backache, be it stress related disorders such as acid peptic disease, we have them. We realize that students need care and control and compassion during these days when they are away from their parents. Second impact point is the importance of having an insurance scheme. And that's where the HCSC emerges, which I said I, should, I will be referring it to later. The insurance program which is implemented now possibly has the potential of being launched as a national program. Students have been a neglected lot as far as the insurance is concerned. But this model propagated by Dr. Alka, who's done a PhD now in health insurance, is to be replicated, giving a white paper on it, both to the University Grants Commission and the IRDA, to replicate this model to the larger benefit of the student community. So see the multiple impact points, educational institutes, student, insurance, preventive health, multiple impact points and that's where HCHC emerges and qualifies to be a game changer. And why I qualify to speak on behalf of the health center and what is my exact motive of talking to you, I shall come to you in a few minutes. Who can better epitomize it than Dr. Wee's Arvinda Aikare or Dr. Devi Shetty's uh, Narayana Rudale, both have adopted procedures and SOPs from the manufacturing industry, right from the time the patient is seen, investigated, treat, counseled, treated, operated, and discharged along with the billing. Standardized process flow sheets which lead to efficacy of operations, cutting down costs of care, and borrowing someone else's assets. In management, they commonly teach us, it's not so important to do the job yourself, get it done, and use others' resources, resource sharing, HMRI, which uses convoys and uses the public health system, the public hospitals, and the mobile apps is a classical example. And finally, right skill, the workforce. Classical examples are again, the Wellspring Hospital, which says that you don't require a gynecologist every time to deliver a patient. I, I subscribe to that view. And here we have amongst us, Colonel Jayalakshmi, who's spearheading under the guidance of Symbiosis College of Nursing, a very radical inform, uh, transforming um, the nurses. She held beautifully a conference the other month on empowering nurses for independent midwifery practice. Why can't nurses conduct most of the deliveries which do not require intervention? So this is the SCON initiative which we have been toying with and the concept of a home healthcare provider visiting the patient at home is another example where you have the right people, as Jim Collins says, right people, right place, right time, right objective, right deliverables, right results. 
wrong people, wrong strategies, wrong deliverables off the bus. That's Jim Collins for you. Now, in doing so, there have been a number of implications. As, as I said, it's not for one man's good. It's for the good of the community. So GDP increases, wealth increases, well-being increases, improvements in the standard of living, but most importantly, the community at large benefits, and in a developing economy like India, there's employment generation. And in doing these, was it an easy path for all these entrepreneurs or all these innovators or all these game changers? No, they had multiple challenges. Just to enumerate a few, enumerating legacy mindset. People come with legacy, so to break that tradition. Third generation phenomenon, when Zabia Khorakewala sits on the board of directors meeting for, for the Wokhart group or when, uh, when, when uh, Preeta Reddy or Sangeeta Reddy sit with their father Apollo on stage, they, they, need to, they need to take uh, calls differently. Innovating to take on giants, the way the things have been already established, and many such other things. I will just end with a small story, you know. I, I've just got a chit that I've got two minutes left, and I won't go beyond 11. It's 10.59. There was a story of this young uh, boy in a, in a village, and this village was visited by a saji or a hermit. And it was believed that this hermit knew he was all knowledgeable. He knew everything about the worldly you know, wisdom. And people were flocking to him in hordes, you know, trying to understand what he would say, learn from his words of wisdom. This young chappie was quite disgusted. He said, how can he be more knowledgeable than my teacher? I will go to him with a beautiful butterfly in my hand. OK? And then I'll ask this Sajay, Babuji, is it living or dead? If he says it is living, I'll crush it, I'll close my fist more tightly so that butterfly will die, I'll prove him wrong. If he says it is dead, I'll leave it. So it'll emerge as living. In both ways, I'll be the winner. He thought he was very smart. He went to the Sajay and said, Babuji, my hand is a titli, is it alive or is it dead? The Sajay, as wise as ever, said, he paused for some time and then said, friend, it's all in your hands. So, the motto of the story, friends, is that over the two years, or the number of years that we have spent and the two days that you are going to be with us here, we have got together a galaxy of people. I believe in this August audience, my student delegates, each one of you can be an entrepreneur, each one of you can be a game changer. Be it Harish Pillay, be it Mr. Reddy, Mr. Daljeet who is speaking later on during the day, Azad Mupen who is going to come up on speaking on workforce challenges, Gautam Sen who is going to talk about primary healthcare delivery, or anyone. My job is to just show you the focus of these people who are going to come on stage. And to narrow the focus on these people, these stalwarts of the healthcare, who will show you what their game-changing strategies will be. Idea is to focus, because if you diffuse the beam largely, you lose focus. So over the two year, days that you are going to be here with you, they are going to be with you, we have arranged these changing strategies. They will share a lot with you. It's for you to get up and grab them. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Take it. Here. So these are the strategies which we are going to have come over the next two days, learn from these stories. So in a typical game-changing strategy, I won't end up by saying thank you. If you are ready to get up and learn from these stalwarts, Amen, Amin, Tatastu, so be it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.